Yo, who's the deadliest, the wickedest and the sickest? Moose are the smoothest and the style is the slickest. Who scores the half court buzzer beat us wishes must be you? Cause nice, not me. Cause trust me, I'm the best, the best, the best, the best, the what? Best, the best, the best, the best, the who? Best, the best, the best, 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 best warmer. I'm always last to be picked and in some cases never picked at all. What? 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 That's right. I sang today and my voice is beautiful. Obviously some of you people thought that I sang a bit out of tune in the past, but this week I thought I'd bring the pain. It's Sunday night, it's 8pm, it's Sammy the Benchwarmer coming to you live and direct from a secret location here in London. We're so happy that you're joining us. Thank you if you join us here on Instagram Live. Why not check it out a little bit later on YouTube? If you're watching on YouTube, why not join us every Sunday evening 8pm on Instagram Live. We have got Monica Wright in the house, hey, hey. aka Purple Rain, Purple Rain. Why, why do they call you Purple Rain? Because I make it rain when you I make, get on the court, yeah? Make it rain and your favourite colour is purple. That's correct. Yeah, alright. Well, we didn't do this last week, uh, but because of popular demand, you need to show us why they call you Purple Rain by shooting a shot into this here shack basket. Easy. Ready for that? Easy. Easy, yeah? Okay. Go for it, go for it. Purple, rain. Okay. Purple. <clears throat> anyway, uh, we'll get into the show. Uh, <clears throat> we'll work on that as weeks go on, perhaps. Uh, you've embarrassed yourself. Uh, but uh, Back to the Future is the first segment of the show uh, where we look at the NBA today uh, compared to the NBA back in the day. And something that happened uh, at the beginning of this week that has just gone past is that Derek Rose uh, took a step back from the Cleveland Cavaliers to think through his future and decide on whether he will be retiring from the NBA. Uh, this was obviously sad news, um, but not necessarily surprising news given the last few years uh, that he's had. Obviously, it's heartbreaking to see the sort of season he had back in 2010, 2011, the MVP season, um, to then feel like his career uh, has never kind of ended or gone on to be what it should have been. Uh, a few weeks ago, we talked uh, a little bit about players who had been affected by injury, uh, but this week I want to look a, bit, a little bit about players who uh, not only perhaps got injured, but for one reason or another, uh, their careers ended early. Uh, last time we talked about Grant Hill, yes, his injury did affect his career, but he still went on to have quite a long career. One of the guys whose careers was affected, whose career was affected by injury, uh, and perhaps retired a little bit early as a result of that, is the man who you see every week in this video. My guy, Larry Johnson. LJ, uh, one of my favourite players. I remember tuning in to uh, NBA videos in the 90s, seeing this guy absolutely yamming it, doing the old dunk contest dunk, the 360 pull down, and all that business. I remember playing in the NBA Jam, and him and Alonso Mourning uh, used to absolutely dominate the game. Uh, I remember when he played for Team USA, as you can see here in 1994, when he played in the Can Canadian uh, Championship, well, the World Championships held in Canada. I remember when he played, made the four-point play uh, for the New York Knicks, uh, but also he had the gold tooth. Who can forget that? How could you not love LJ? But with all of that, he, oh, and Grandmama. How could I not even mention Grandmama? If you don't know what that is, type it in on the old Google machine. Larry Johnson, Grandmama. Um, his career ended at just 32 years old. Uh, it's hard to, to realize that because he always looked like he was in his like mid thirties throughout his whole playing career, partly because he was built like a tank. Um, but he is one of a few guys who I would like to suggest that their career ended prematurely and he retired quite early. I've named three other players who I think's careers ended prematurely. You can check that out on the sideline blog, warmingthebench.com, uh, and I discuss uh, that on there. So do tune into that, and I'd love to hear your opinions on other guys who you think's career ended a little bit too early. Okie dokie. Uh, we're going to keep moving uh, with my slam hashtag my slam where we look at the uh, legendary cover stories and predictions from the world's greatest basketball magazine. That is, of course, Slam Magazine, and I'd love to pull out issue. Uh, I, in fact, I am going to pull out issue number 21 with this legendary cover. Uh, with Kevin Garnett and of course Stefan Marbury, another guy who at least NBA career in some people's opinion may have ended a bit too early but of course continued and still continues to play overseas 
uh, in China. Uh, did talk about a comeback to the NBA uh, last season, but or this season I should say, but didn't quite happen. KG obviously going on to have a great and amazing career, NBA champion and retiring just last year. Um, amazing cover. I love everything that's going on. Their clothes, their swagger, their mean look. The uh, the fancy jewellery with the old Starbury logo on there. Uh, the backwards visor, yeah? The backwards visor. Who doesn't love a little bit of backwards visor action? If you really had swag, you had it upside down as well. Um, there's also a great article in here. Some of you have been following will know that I interviewed uh, the guy who was the editor of Slam at this time, who was Tony Giovino, and he expressed regret uh, that in this interview he did with Stefan Marbury, which you can read here in issue 21, he basically slated uh, the Milwaukee Bucks for trading him for Ray Allen. Of course we know that Ray Allen went on to be somewhat of an NBA legend, broke, broke all sorts of records with three-point shooting, whereas respectfully Stefan Marbury uh, didn't go on to have quite the same NBA career. Uh, you can read about that here, it's fascinating, and if you want to uh, listen to that interview I had with Tony Giovino, again you can check it out on the Sideline blog on warmingthebench.com. That is hashtag my slam. This is a great issue. If you can find it on eBay, it's issue 21. Uh, it came out in October 1997 and it's an absolute classic. Hang that on your wall. That is my slam. Monica Wright, what are you saying? Have you recovered from that um, awkward moment? Um, it wasn't awkward at all. Um, mm. Anyway, we've got some people here. I want to shout out Mikey Blacks. He's asking, what's the YouTube, my bro? Yes, Mikey Blacks. Check out the website, warmingthebench.com. You will see on the menu, The Bench Warmer TV. Please subscribe, and you can watch all sorts of videos on there as well. We've also got Bobby Faith. He's been commenting a lot. He says, Marbury's career was over when he ate Vaseline on a live stream. Yeah, he did that. Wow. It was very awkward, very awkward. Um, Bobby Faith also says, different player once he got rid of the gold tooth. He was. He really was. I didn't even know it was possible. Like, did he, how did he even get the gold off his tooth? If I had a gold tooth, that would be me for life, mate. Never taking that out. Anyone else to shout out there, Monica Wright? Yeah, we've got Kamikaze Kicks. We've got Jack Giorgio, 23. We've got Wilbur Mora. We've got Ryan Kluber. Yeah. Cool. Welcome, Sh everyone. Shout out, Eula. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, it's time for I Love This Stuff. Um, we've got something fantastic to come through. I always use the word fantastic. Every time I watch the video back, I think I've got to think of a different word. We've had something great come through the post this week. A pair of, a, a, a pair, a box of sealed NBA basketball cards from the 1995-96 season. It's top series one uh, basketball cards. Uh, often people say, where do you get these box sets that have never been opened since the 90s? I'm never going to tell you, you brutes. But um, eBay's a great place. That's all I am going to say. Take with that information and do with it what you will. Um, I didn't actually get these ones off eBay. I got them from a secret place. Uh, without making any hype, I just unboxed them casually. I took off the plastic seal um, and we're going to open them. But I really want to hear from you guys and know what was your favourite basketball cards from the 90s. I was partial to the basketball stickers uh, because that's what we had here in the UK. I filled a whole book, uh, a whole book, sorry, I think it was 94, 95, something like that, uh, and had a lot of fun doing that. But I also collected basketball cards. Just something really excited about them. Uh, there was one other kid at school who was collecting them and like just me and him trading with one another. So it's a little bit sad. Um, you know, I had a, a, a sad early card collecting career, but who's laughing now? Yeah, I've got the whole box mate. <laughs> Idiots. All right, we're gonna go into, that. that is I love this stuff. And, 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 and it was a bit of a brief one, but this week it is just literally all about basketball cards. They're so exciting. Still now at something years old, uh, I love opening them and being excited about opening these packs. I play it cool each week when we do Bench Warmer of the Week, but I'm actually uh, ecstatic as I open them. And so without further ado, we are going to look for the Bench Warmer of the Week from this very box. So here we go. Who will be the Bench Warmer of the Week from this legendary Tops 95-96 NBA Basketball Card Series with John Stockton, the legend himself, on the cover. Who likes short shorts? John Stockton does. All right, we're gonna just slip a, a pack out here. Nice. Check out those bad boys. What do you think of that, Monica Wright? Pretty amazing. Shiny. 
Yeah. Shiny. How many cards does it contain? 12 cards. Uh, yeah, let's let's see who's the bench warmer of the week. I'm gonna read them out. It could be people I've never heard before, uh, heard of before, or it could be people who just we know had terrible stats, a terrible career. Love to hear your thoughts as well as we're pulling them out. Uh, let us know who you think out of these is the bench warmer of the week. The first person, I think we've had it a couple couple of weeks ago, and he and he's a definite contender for the bench warmer of the week. Tyrone Corbin. Is he the bench warmer? He may well be. Let us know your thoughts. Chris Mullin, is he the bench warmer? No, he is certainly not. Sir Charles Barkley, I like these card designs by the way, with the gold writing. Is he the bench warmer? No, he's not. Ooh, this is nice. Showstoppers, Anthony Penny Hardaway. Is he the bench warmer? No, he's not. We have got Nate McMillan, not the bench warmer. Antonio Davis, not the bench warmer. And then also Dale Davis, one after the other. What are the chances of that? He is also not the bench warmer. This is stacked this week. Patrick Ewing, we know he's not the bench warmer. We've only got one prospect at the moment. Chuck Person, sorry, I'm saying that before I've even shown you. Chuck Person, he's not the bench warmer. Uh, we've got Hakeem Elijah, one who's not the bench warmer. This is too much. I think we're just gonna have one winner. Rex Chapman, who we know is not the bench warmer just because of his dunking ability. Um, and then uh, Matt, ugh, I can never pronounce his name, which is terrible because he's such a legend and it makes me look like a complete dimwit. Uh, Mahmoud Abdurrouf, um, also known, formerly, formerly known as Chris Jackson. Uh, we know he's not the bench warmer because he's just a fantastic player. But let me look at a couple stats here. Uh, we know that um, the first one we picked out, Monica Wright, thank you very much was the bench warmer. Tyrone Corbin, but I've also picked up Rex, Rex Chapman uh, because I'm also not sure that he had amazing stats over his career. And then Chuck Person, although he was amazing with the Pacers, perhaps didn't have a great end to his career. So what do you guys think? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Be dropping your comments. Is it Tyrone Corbin? Is it Chuck Person? Is it Rex Chapman? Let's look at their NBA career averages. Person, you know what, he did He did get on all right actually. He always averaged quite high points apart from his last two seasons. And then he finished with an average of 17 points. So I don't think we can say he's the bench warmer. Uh, over his NBA career, X Chapman averaged 16 points. And then, yeah, Tyrone Corbin, uh, he only averaged 10 points. I was sort of clutching at straws there trying to find another bench warmer. But this has got to be the guy. Have we got anyone on there? Monica Wright, who's suggesting who the bench warmer might be. We sure have. Clippers 92-93 is saying tie all the yeah, way. Definitely. Um, Blade 1313 says Chuck Pearson had the best career. Okay. And we've also got I Bobby stand Fade corrected. saying Penny's knees are the bench warmers. Mm, sad. It's a sad state of affairs. Um, but yeah, we, we, we tried, but like literally this guy was definitely a standout for the whole pack. He's the bench warmer of the week. It's Tyrone Corbin, bench warmer of the week, ladies and gentlemen. I know that the music stops, but let's music has stopped. But let's bask in the silence for a moment as we remember the bench warmer of the week. Um, that that was an amazing pack. It was just stacked with legends. Um, the first person, when I count down to comment with a basketball emoji, wins this straight through their doorstep. Wherever you are in the world, you're going to get this to your house. So in a basketball emoji, post it in the comments in three, in two, in one. Who's going to get it? Who's going to get Tyrone Corbin, the bench warmer of the week, straight to their door? <laughs> Who's got the quick fingers? <laughs> Who's going to make it happen? Oh! <laughs> Nobody wants it. <laughs> Nobody wants it. It's Playful Draftsman. Well done. Congratulations well, to you. Well done, Playful Draftsman. You will be getting Tyrone Corbin to your oh. door. Do drop me a DM. Um, make sure that you uh, send me your address so I can send that to you. Uh, and that will com be coming straight to, to your doorstep. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in this week. It's been fantastic having you guys on board. Uh, as I said, as always, if you're on YouTube, uh, check me out on at Warming the Bench on Instagram. You can watch every week on Instagram Live, 8 p.m. UK time. Uh, we'll stream live and you can get involved in the show. If you're watching on Instagram, why don't you check it out? A little bit later on YouTube, you can find uh, my YouTube channel through my website, warmingthebench.com. Uh, where you can subscribe. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, also, you can read uh, my blogs 
uh, look at photos, that sort of thing. Uh, so do check that out. Thank you so much for joining us this week. Uh, Monica Wright, you got any final words? I just want to say thank you to Bobby Fade. He's bigging me up. He's saying, big up Monica as always, another awesome show. Um, you, I just want to say Wright. hey to Craigie Hughes. Too late to the party, you were indeed. Uh, um, hello to AJ Beast, thanks for tuning in. Playful Draftsman, well done for receiving the bench from a card. That's it guys. Well done, thank you Monica Wright for the assist Good as rolls. always. Um, it's been great having you here, aka Purple Rain, Purple Rain. Join us next week, 8pm, right here, Instagram Live. We can't wait to see you guys then. Peace!